let's call this vector f and this vector g and position them so that the tail of each vector is touching. Vector f can be expressed as a sum of two other vectors, one parallel to g and the other perpendicular to g, creating a right angle triangle where theta is the angle between the vectors f and g. This vector is called the vector projection of f onto g, and this vector is called the vector rejection of f from g. This video will be broken into three parts. First, we'll talk about vector projections and understand the different equivalent forms of formulae, and we'll move on to talk about vector rejections, and finally, go through a worked example of an extended response question. Let's begin with vector projections. This is the formula to find the vector projection of f onto g. But to truly understand the idea of vector projections, we need to understand what the formula really means. Using trigonometric ratios, cosine theta is adjacent side over hypotenuse. So cosine theta is the magnitude of the projection of f onto g over the magnitude of f. Because remember, trigonometric ratios represent the ratios of the side lengths of a triangle. They are lengths rather than vector quantities. Rearranging this equation gives us the magnitude of the projection of f onto g equals magnitude of f times cosine theta. This represents the length of the vector projection, which means it has no direction, it is a scalar quantity. But we need to find the vector, not the length of the vector. To represent this geometrically, we can say this is the length of the vector projection, and this is the vector projection. That means we need to give this length a direction, and since the vector projection points in the direction of the vector g, to find the vector projection, we can multiply this length by the unit vector of g, which is represented by g hat, which gives it a direction without changing the length of the vector, because any unit vector is one unit in length. This formula can be further simplified using the dot product. Given that f dot g is equal to the magnitude of vector f times magnitude of vector g times cosine theta, we can rearrange the equation to find cosine theta Substituting cosine theta into the equation, we get vector projection of f onto g equals magnitude of vector f times the unit vector of g times f dot g over magnitude of vector f times magnitude of vector g. We can simplify the unit vector of g to vector g over magnitude of vector g, and magnitude of vector f cancels out. Therefore, the vector projection is given by vector g over the magnitude of vector g times f dot g over magnitude of vector g. Then we expand the fraction so that the denominator becomes magnitude of g times magnitude of g. We know that g dot g is equivalent to magnitude of g times magnitude of g since we are taking the dot product of two vectors that are exactly equivalent. That means the vectors are on top of each other, and therefore the angle between the two vectors is zero. So cosine theta would be cosine zero, which equals one. So g dot g is equivalent to magnitude of g times magnitude of g. Therefore we get the vector projection of f onto g equals f dot g over g dot g times g. And all of these are vectors. And that is why this formula works. An equivalent formula is f dot g hat times g hat, and this equivalent form can be derived from this first formula. We explained previously that g dot g is equivalent to magnitude of g times magnitude of g, so we get this. We can slightly rewrite this equation like so, and this will make the maths a little bit easier in the next few steps. But before we continue, we need to first understand a special property of the dot product which states that if k is a scalar multiple, then k times vector f dot vector g is equivalent to k times the dot product of the vectors f and g, and this is also equivalent to vector f dot k times vector g. In simpler terms, this property tells us that factors of individual vectors in the dot product expression can be taken out and put at the front of the dot product. And the reverse is also true, a factor at the front of the dot product can be combined with one of the vectors in the dot product expression. 
Here we can see that 1 over magnitude of g is a scalar factor of the dot product of the vectors f and g. In other words, we can say that k equals 1 over magnitude of g. Using the special property of dot products, this means we can say that 1 over magnitude of g times f dot g is equivalent to f dot g over magnitude of g. Therefore, projection of f onto g equals f dot g over magnitude of g times g over magnitude of g. Finally, since g over the magnitude of g is the definition of the unit vector of g, therefore the projection of f onto g equals f dot g hat times g hat. So these are the two main formulae that we can use to find the vector projection of f onto g. That's vector projections. Now let's talk about vector rejections. If we look at this diagram, this vector is the vector rejection of f from g. Let's call this vector a. That means a equals vector f minus the vector projection of f onto g. Vector rejections typically have two main applications. The first of these is that the length of this vector rejection is the shortest distance from this point to vector g. If we call this point p, then we can say that the magnitude of a equals the shortest distance from point p to the vector g. Our extended response question that we'll work through in part 3 of this video involves this application of vector rejections. The second application of vector rejections occurs when we resolve a vector into rectangular components. If we need to resolve vector f into rectangular components, then we need to express f as a sum of two other vectors, one that is parallel to g and the other perpendicular to g, just like what we have done to our diagram. Then that means we can say that vector f equals the projection of f onto g plus the vector a, which is given by vector f minus projection of f onto g. Finally, let's go through an example problem. This is our problem. Points a, b, and c have position vectors o a equals i plus 2j plus 2k, o b equals 2i plus j plus k, and o c equals 2i minus 3j. And these are the three parts to this question. And here's a diagram that will help us when we answer these questions. First, we can rewrite each of these vectors using bracket notation to make things a little bit simpler. Now let's look at the first question. Find vector AB and vector AC. If we draw these vectors on our diagram, this is AB and this is AC. Vector AB equals OB minus OA, which is equal to 2, 1, 1, minus 1, 2, 2. So we subtract the i, j, and k components separately. Therefore, ab equals 1, negative 1, negative 1, which is equivalent to i minus j minus k. Vector ac equals oc minus oa, which is equal to 2, negative 3, 0, minus 1, 2, 2. So again, we subtract the i, j, and k components separately. Therefore, AC equals 1, negative 5, negative 2, which is equivalent to I minus 5J minus 2K. Part B requires us to find the vector projection of AB onto AC. So let's take a closer look at these two vectors. This vector is the vector projection of AB onto AC. Going back to our formula before, we said that the vector projection of F onto G equals f dot g over g dot g times g. Therefore, the vector projection of ab onto ac equals ab dot ac over ac dot ac times ac. We already know that ab equals 1, negative 1, negative 1, and ac equals 1, negative 5, negative 2. So we can substitute each vector into this equation. The numerator is given by ab dot ac, which is the dot product of 1, negative 1, negative 1, and 1, negative 5, negative 2, which equals 1 times 1 plus negative 1 times negative 5 plus negative 1 times negative 2, and this equals 1 plus 5 plus 2, which equals 8. The denominator is given by ac dot ac, 
which is the dot product of 1, negative 5, negative 2, and 1, negative 5, negative 2, which equals 1 times 1 plus negative 5 times negative 5 plus negative 2 times negative 2, and this equals 1 plus 25 plus 4, which equals 30. Therefore, the vector projection of AB onto AC equals 8 over 30 times the vector 1, negative 5, negative 2, which can be simplified to 4 over 15 times the vector 1, negative 5, negative 2. Now let's move on to part C of this question, which requires us to find the shortest distance from point B to the line AC. All we need to do is draw a line from point B to the vector AC. And this line needs to be perpendicular to AC. Then we calculate the distance of this perpendicular path because the shortest distance from a point to a line is always just the perpendicular path from the point to the line. If we look at this diagram carefully, we will notice that the perpendicular path that we need to find the distance of is actually just the vector rejection of AB from AC. That means we need to find what this vector rejection is, then calculate the length of this vector, and this will give us the shortest distance from point B to the line AC. Let vector D be the vector rejection of AB from AC. So vector D equals vector AB minus the projection of AB onto AC. We know what AB is, and we also know what the vector projection is. So we can substitute these vectors into the equation. And this gives us this. To make the subtraction a little bit easier, we can say that 1, negative 1, negative 1 equals 15 over 15 times the vector 1, negative 1, negative 1. So if we put this all over the same denominator, vector d becomes 15 times 1, negative 1, negative 1 minus 4 times 1, negative 5, negative 2, all over 15. Now we need to subtract the i, j, and k components separately. 15 minus 4 is 11, so we have 11i. Then we have minus 15 plus 20, which is 5, so that's 5j. And finally, negative 15 plus 8 is negative 7, so that's negative 7k. And this is all over 15. We can rewrite this as 1 over 15 times the vector 11, 5, negative 7. And this is the vector rejection of AB from AC. Therefore, to find the shortest distance from point B to the line AC, we take the magnitude of this vector. Something important to understand here is that the constant factor 1 over 15 means that the length of the vector D is 1 over 15 times the length of the vector 11, 5, negative 7. That means our final answer can be obtained by first finding the magnitude of the vector 11, 5, negative 7, then multiplying this value by 1 over 15. Mathematically, this can be expressed as the magnitude of D equals 1 over 15 times the square root of 11 squared plus 5 squared plus negative 7 squared. The value under the square root sign equals 121 plus 25 plus 49, which equals 195. So that means our final answer is square root of 195 over 15. And this is the shortest distance from point B to the line AC.